This week, three sides of the coin, Lisa's back. She reveals the new Glam Light Kiss makeup set that she purchased. And it's pretty fucking incredible. I think Mark actually wants to get a set of these. Plus, we do a whole series of hit and run. You ask some pretty freaking cool questions that I think will lead to some really cool discussions online. Visit threesidesofthecoin.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate it. Three Sides of the Coin. Talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides. Looking for official Three Sides of the Coin merchandise? T-shirts, hoodies, and more? Visit shop3sidesofthecoin.com. We ship. Hey, Three Sides of the Coin. I don't know how this week's show is going to ultimately play out because we got Lisa with us today. This is a goddamn To start miracle. with. But she's only here for a short time because then she's got to go to court because she was a naughty, naughty girl. It's a dr- defensive driving course. She, and, and, and we, you know, we were already talking about how this is going to work out. So what's going to end up happening is that she's going to be sentenced to six months in mm-hmm. a correctional facility for her crimes where she will meet a sadistic lesbian warden. They will only wear panties and something sexy on top. Wow. And there'll be all kinds of trouble going on. You really thought that about, or is that just oh, a movie? Uh, that- to- to- Tommy's been dreaming of this since he was about 12 years old. <laughs> Caged Heat. Caged Heat starring Lisa Martini. <laughs> That's horrible. All right. <laughs> so so a- any anyway, and at some point Mark will show up. We we don't know when and Honestly, we have no idea what his mood's going to be like when he does show up. So, <laughs> well, I don't know. Are they, is this hockey team winning right now or losing? Because that'll tell you. well, it, it 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 there's that, but I think it it also greatly hinges on has he had any food or not. Well, there's always- his hockey his hockey team could be winning, but if he hasn't eaten, that doesn't matter. But but he's always hungry. He'll be angry. Then you know he hasn't eaten. I'm just saying. You know? um, so anyway, Lisa's here to um, reveal yeah. <laughs> the warden's to, plan to, to to reveal the new kiss makeup line that she got, From and the- and she said she's going to actually open it up and use it. So this could just like freak people out. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm going to use it too. Oh, I'm, I'll use it. Okay, okay, I'll use it. Okay. All right. Are we ready? Tell me when you're ready. Go. Okay. All right. So, I will tell and you. you and you're responsible for watching your own time, so you're not late for court. Yes, sir. Okay. Came very quickly, I will say. Packaged very nicely. Okay. Oh, um, and wait a minute. Before you go any further, where can one find this? Because you ordered it obviously online. So give people. It. So it's glam light. Let me just look it up again, so I don't mess it up. Um, it's glamlight.com, L-I-T-E. Let me just make sure that's right. Hold on, because I don't want to give the wrong, I don't want to give out the wrong info. It is glamlight.com, G-L-A-M-L-I-T-E. Um, a couple cool things about, uh, this, uh, company is it's not just kiss stuff. I'm not going to lie. It's actually some pretty cool, like specialized palettes, right? So, that not only do they have Kiss, but I mean, if you're into like a Nightmare on Elm Street palette, they actually have eyeshadows for Nash- for um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, fr- Friday the Thirteenth, Chucky, um, like Scoop, like Scooby Doo Glam Light. So it's palette. all theme. It's yeah, themed it's makeup. All, yeah, it's all themed, and it's really cool. And a really cool one that I really want is they have a martini, a dirty martini palette. Ooh. I know, and it comes in the pal. I'm gonna use. I'll show you the kiss one, but it comes with like all the things on the palette, but all martini related. Uh, I think I need that. Okay. So anyway, um, so that's where you can order it, and it comes in different things. So you can actually order. Um, you can. There's a couple things, so you can just get the. It comes like a la carte, right? So you can get the eye makeup or the mascara or the lipstick, or you can get the bundle. So there's a couple bundles that you can get. You can get um, the 
the, the eyeshadow palette itself. You can get the mascara palette or you can get the PR bundle, which I got. And it includes all of that in a, like in, in kiss packaging. Okay. So that's what I got. Um, very nicely boxed, um, like good, good packaging. Do you, are, are you aware of this company before this? I mean, are no. the, is it, is, I wonder, is this, from what you can tell, is this like a good makeup line, a good makeup company, or is this like some chintzy cheap makeup? Um, I've never heard of it before. Okay. And, and I, it's, I've never heard of it. Um, I don't know much about it, um, but they really promoted the Kiss palettes very, very well. Now, other palettes and other um, other specialties, I've never seen them before. So okay. I think this really resonated, and they and it it was promoted to the correct audiences, right? Because okay. I didn't even know this even existed. I don't even know if the makeup is good quality, but we'll find out, right? And so. and and this is just to be clear, this is not makeup to make yourself look like no. the demon or the star no. child. This this is. This is makeup for everyday use. Yes, makeup for everyday use. Like I said, it has mascara, lipstick, um, eyeshadow, and it has this other thing, like a, a black and white, like, uh, like liquid makeup. I'm not sure what that's used for, but we'll figure that out as well. I have no idea what it's for, but it's like pure black and pure white liquid. I don't know if you use okay. it like your eyes, and then you take the glitter and put it on top, and it like brings it out. I'm very minimalistic on my makeup. So, you know, it is what it is. All right. So we're going to open up the thing. Tommy, does this interest you so far? Or are you going to sit back Still and take a nap? Still in the box. You know what? It, you're on mute. You're on mute. That's okay. No, this interests me because Mark's not talking. Okay. Well, <laughs> first of all, first of all, for all the men in our audience, right? Two things. A, you're not going to wear the makeup, right? But it's a cool thing to have. And two, if you're married, this is a really good gift to give for your wife, girlfriend, significant other, or mistress on the side, whatever. But would would that only be a good gift if she was a Kiss fan? Because uh, like like no. if my my wife is not a Kiss fan really, and if I, I gave her Kiss makeup as a present, I think I'd be in the doghouse. Or Me you would too. do it. Or you would just do it for yourself and just give it to her and be like, hey, honey, look, I got you this really cool thing. And if you don't want it. I'm, I'm sorry, but but after all these years, she'd read right through that and go, yeah, that, that doesn't fly. Yeah. It's like the time that I gave Cheryl uh, season one of the Rockford Files on DVD for Christmas. That didn't go over well, but I loved it. It was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it wouldn't go over really well. Okay. There's the packaging. Is that like a cardboard box? It is a cardboard box. Let me take it out of the thing. Okay, so here's the. So I'm going to stand up because it's. It kind of hurts. All right, so there's the front. Okay. It's nice packaging. For Very sure. nice packaging. Here's the back. And it looks like, like a road case. Okay, but, so. but to be clear, and especially for those who are only listening, it's not a road case. It's not no. metal. It just, it's just a cardboard box that's very well detailed yes. to look and like a road case. And this is raised right here. So this is okay. the, the best is raised, is raised left. And right. and the imagery on the back is the original four. It's not Tommy and Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for saying that, because I keep forgetting that some, some uh, listeners are going to be listening and not watching. So I appreciate that. So there's that. And it has kind of a really cool, like almost metallic to it. Okay. So we're going to open it. Got to open it up from the bottom. Oh, right, so there's, there's a one. nice. There, so then, then inside the cover, there is a live photo of the current band. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this, well, then there's a piece of thing in there. Piece of plastic. Comes with a really cool little card. Like a destroyer image postcard. And then the back kind of gives a little bit more detail on So 
and actually the picture on the back of that postcard is showing women doing their makeup like kiss so mm-hmm. i wonder if that's what some of it is for yep okay. like i have i got have i got some great makeup for you okay <laughs> so here's each of the pieces all right so we'll take them out all together okay then we'll go through each one individually because they're all kind of put in here okay so there comes with this and it comes with something else but we'll show that in a second too all right and then there's just the bottom of the box nothing exciting. and and okay. how much was this bundle that you bought so this bundle was 120 dollars. shipping is free and it comes like in a week, not even a week, very and quick. For, for all the, the guys out there who have no idea about makeup, like me, is that very expensive for makeup in that quantity or is that typically priced? I felt, um, I don't buy a lot of stuff, okay? I did feel that for $120, what I'll show you, it was worth it. The packaging is stellar. Okay, that packaging, that box is amazing. Um, I feel that what it came with, I mean, if you looked at each thing individually, like the uh, the the palette itself with the eyeshadow is $36. Um, so when you kind of go through it each individually, I think it's, a, I personally think that $120 is not a bad price for all of this. I really okay. don't. And even the marketing and the packaging is is fantastic. It's really, okay. really good. So I feel it's it's decent. Okay, so let's start with the eyeshadow, okay? Because that's the coolest. All right, so this. Okay, so we have. All right, so there's the front. Okay, the the first album cover. And then it gives you on the back, kind of a little like a little storyline up here in the first paragraph, and then all the ingredients and things down there. So that's kind of the, like. It says, introducing our rock and roll all night party every day palette created to celebrate the legacy of America's top gold record award winning group of all time, Kiss. This remarkable 20 color palette has been meticulously curated. This is cool. With each row crafted to pay homage to the individuality of every band member, the star child, the demon, the catman, and the spaceman. Drawing from their vibrant personas, the palette boasts, boasts an array of ultimate pigmented reds, cool tone blues, vibrant greens, and electric purple tones, ensuring that everyone, every look you create is as, as iconic as the band itself. Okay, so, and then it gives you just the ingredients. All right, so there's the side. Again, very nice packaging, for yes. sure. Packaging is, 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 is amazing. Very sturdy. Um, all right, so let's lift it up. Ooh, and another picture in the inside of the cover. Yeah, they, they did an amazing job yep. putting oh, all look, the packaging look, together. Look at this. Ooh, a lenticular. Wow. That's really cool. That is kick ass. Look at all it's the lentic- albums. It's like a lenticular of all the album covers. Oh, let me take it out. Ooh. Oh, yeah, it's just the empty hole. Okay. This is amazing. That's what she said. It's just the empty hole. So I love that. That right there is awesome. Uh, and again, the back um, is just a reiteration of that of the paragraph that was on the other one. But look how cool the logo is. Yep. Yep. All right, let's open it up. Wow. All right. Little, so, little cut out of the band in front of a mirror. Band. Okay, now, but look at this. So this is the cover of the eyeshadows. See that plastic piece? I'm sorry. Yeah. Very bad, very bad um, reflection. I apologize. No, no, no. I can no, see it. No, it's cool. I can see it. That's cool. See that reflection? That is awesome. Okay, now, there's all the eyeshadows. So that little piece just protects the eyeshadows from cracking. That's an all female makeup crap. Okay, so if you look, oh, there's little there's little symbols carved yeah. into the top of the makeup. His yeah. imagery, that's cool. So basically, you what got. What do you think Mark's gonna see when he sees uh, Axe? 
So, you know, basically what, what, what this means is you've got to buy two sets. Yep. You've got to buy one of these sets so you don't disturb the, the imagery on the makeup. And then if you're going to want to use the makeup, you've got to buy a second set. But look at that. Is that not? Look, That's and look, very cool. The titles. And very you, cool. It, it's So the top row is all blues. Yep. The second row is all like greens. Then there's purples and reds. And yep. the last is black. That is awesome. That is that's really really cool. All right, so impressed impressed with the with the eyeshadows. Very cool. All right, so there's the eyeshadow palette. All right, we on time. All right, we're doing good. Okay, there's the eyeshadow palette. Um, I'll put that away in a minute. Okay, next, I gotta hurry up. Next is the black and white stage makeup base. Now, not sure what the hell this is used for. Okay, I'm guessing this is literally if you wanted to make yourself up to look like Kiss. Okay, let's see what it says. Drawing the power, so there's white and black. It says, drawing the power from the iconic black and white makeup that defined Kiss, this white stage base creates the perfect blank eye canvas to elevate your colorful eyeshadows. All right, so you put them on before the eyeshadow. Okay, never did that before, but I. Right. So there's the cover. Again, there's the sides. Yep, And very back. well done. And the back, and then to, you pull it out like that. They're just little plastic tubes of white and black, and it's got the Kiss icons on it, Kiss logo. Um, yeah, they this company really went all out. Yep. In in the packaging, it was you know a lot of people would just slap a Kiss logo on the outside of the box and call it done. Here is the uh, the lipstick. Kiss That's lick it up lipstick. And it says, inspired by Kiss's iconic hit, Lick It Up, this red lip kit is the embodiment of bold and unapologetic rock and roll allure. Deep dive into a luxurious, rich, pigmented formula with a bullet lipstick that ensures an intense and lasting red that won't back down. Pair it with a precision lip liner, blah, blah, blah. All right. I so, would love to see Mark put on some Kiss Lick It Up lipstick. Very cool. I mean, this, this packaging is off the chart. Yep. The lipstick pencils are very well packaged. Beautiful. And here's the lipstick. I I got to tell you, I mean, for for the, the guys out there who are KISS fans, look, you would probably want this just for the incredible packaging. Do you the, see the that? Kiss lo the KISS logo is carved into the lipstick. So, again, you've got to buy two of these. Wow. One not to use and one to use. That is amazing. And you know what? And it's not a real, like, bright, like, red. It's more of, like, a burgundy-ish red. So I would probably, I don't like that real it's, red. It's not, it's, it's not the come fuck me red? Yeah, that's, thank you. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to be that. <laughs> I was going to call it slut red, but I didn't say that. I didn't want to say because that, that would be bad. I'm just keeping it to myself. Okay, so there's you're the muted. You're muted, Tommy. I know, that's the lip. You say it like that's a bad thing. Oh no. All right. Oh, I have two minutes. Okay, I gotta hurry up. Okay, this is the mascara. Oh, I got two things to show. That's the mascara. Okay. okay. And then the same thing, there's a little thing. Rock your look with the platinum lash duo inspired by the legendary platforms of Kiss. Oh, it's called platform lash. Got it. Prep with the gleaming white, then you put on the black, blah blah blah. Okay. And again, there's the little thing of You got a love gun imagery mm -hmm. on the back and then it's just i don't want no but i think it's just regular mascara but how do you take it out oh look at that cool package again wow well done that is very cool that is oh there's the front very impressed very 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 impressed just regular mascara um Sure beats okay. the hell out of the makeup kit from the 70s. I you know, right? And then one last <laughs> one last thing. Oops, I'm a little late. One last thing is the mirror. Love gun imagery, mirror. It's got the Kiss Army logo on it. Yeah, this is very cool. Um, I'll open it real quick. Yeah, don't be late for the judge. I know, I know. 
Okay, here. Oh, or this could be your last show ever. Can you see that? Oh, I look at that. It's like a romper room mirror. Romper stomper. Bomper boo. The is the, <laughs> and, then it, and then it has the glam light logo. It's really quite amazing. I'm, I, I mean, they've really is. done a nice job with that. Very. There will be people who will buy it just because of this. It's gorgeous. It, it's almost it's like glam light talk to a Kiss fan. Mm -hmm. It's beautifully done. I mean, and I think that the box, like what I got was the PR, like fancy box, um, which I absolutely, I think it's fantastic. What a, what a great thing to keep in a collection. Now, the thing I did not get was I did not get that lenticular bag, Kiki. Um, you know, I, that was kind of cool, but I look probably is the front of like, the looks like the front of the eye palette. So I did not get the lenticular bag, but maybe I will purchase that. I think it's all, it's not that. None of this is this this palette right here is thirty six dollars. I I would imagine based on the quality of everything you just opened up, their lenticular bag would probably be pretty damn cool. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I I'm going to take a look at it, but um, I think that, that again, the packaging, the packaging on the inside, obviously, but just the way it's packaged in shipment, um, I did it a very nice job. Like nothing's broken, nothing's. I did have a little bit of a dent on the end of the like on the end of the PR box, but nothing like that would make me like blow up or go, Oh God, it's just, I mean, it, who cares? Right. It is. It's not a big deal, but okay. So there you go. There's my glam light. Awesome. Uh, well, Lisa, thank you for showing us your makeup kit. Very impressive. Now go sweet talk to judge. Go okay. get yourself out of traffic court. Yes, sir. All right, guys. I love you. Bye. Bye. So there you go. Lisa didn't have time to put any makeup on. She was going to, but it's a pretty cool looking makeup kit. I mean, it really is. It's it's impressive. You know? Yep. So why don't we, should we assume that Mark's just not going to show up? Yeah, because I, I would say that that's probably, yeah. Okay. So. Remember, Tommy, this is your show this week. Right. You know, we, we, we talked about it last week. You, you can do whatever you want this show. So if you want to, if you want to just start talking about garbage or if you want to do the hit and run questions. No, I want to do the hit and run. I want to do the hit and run questions. I really do. And, and we'll talk about other stuff as well. You know, and I, 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 I don't know if we want to read comments, but I would just note, holy crap, did we get a ton of great comments for last week's show about well, yeah. the Kiss out the Kiss album that you got you into Kiss and the band that you discovered late in the career, then went back and found all of their music. Lots of great comments. Well, we can start there, but you know, it'd be nice as if you read them. No, this is your show. I'm I just going to sit. I'm going to sit back and do nothing. I'm pretending I'm Tommy. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then. Uh, hmm. All right. Let's start with the hit and run questions. How's that sound? Okay. Hold on. Okay. There we go. Hold on. Nice. Okay. So, hit and run questions. Can you share how all of you met each other? I've heard your reference meeting at Kiss Expos before, but don't believe I've heard the stories of the first time everyone met. And this comes from Nick DiTullio. So well, Nick, Nick, it goes all the way back to this bathhouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there was a bat. You know how like when you walk into Cheers and there was a little thing that's, that was sitting for Norm on his stool? Well, there was a bathtub with Mark's name on it. We're yeah. like, who is this guy? Who is this Mark guy? And why are there a bunch of keys on his chair? Exactly. <laughs> no, we, we, it's true. We met at Expos. Michael and I, even though we both lived in Minnesota, he lived in Bloomington. I grew up in St. Louis Park, which is 20 minutes from one another, but we never knew each other through high school. We actually, we, met we yeah, we, we, we were at many of the same events in Minnesota, but we just didn't know each other. We didn't cross paths. Tommy and I 
probably we first met at not even a Kiss Expo, but just a regular record convention. Uh, Hillside. Yeah, you you were a dealer selling records and and VHS tapes and photos and stuff like that. And yeah. that's where you and I first met. Right. And I met Mark at a Kiss convention at Meadowlands in uh, New Jersey, the ones that Richie Rano used to to put on. So yeah, I don't... I, I don't remember the first convention I met Mark at, but I went to many of them. And I know, he, I mean, he was a dealer at so many of these. So our paths crossed many, many times um, at these conventions. Yeah. And then I don't remember how I met Lisa the first time. Probably. Well, a- again, same, same, same thing. I think paths crossed at many conventions, but. It was actually Mark who suggested Lisa come on as the fourth for the show. Yes, that's true. But I had met her before, um, I think, at an expo. So I knew I knew of her. I knew who she was, um, but didn't know her well. Um, And then Mark will have to answer that on his own sometime. When he Which means you'll, you'll, you'll never get an answer. So you'll never get an answer out of him. So just be prepared. Um, next question. Uh, Tapak wants to know, who would be your dream guest if you hadn't had them on the show yet? I don't think any podcast has had Ace's stunt double from Kiss Meets the Phantom. Um, from Taras Kachowski to... Uh, excuse me, Kachowski that met Tommy in Winnipeg. I'm sorry, Taras. Uh, I don't know, Mike, who would you like to have on that we haven't had on? You know, I, I, I will say Michael James Jackson was a holy grail until mm-hmm. we were yeah. able to make that happen. Um, yeah. After that, who would it be? Vinny Poncia might be really good. Um. Uh, and and honestly, I am more holy grail people are almost people I don't even know are out there. Like, That's you know, the, point. you know, engineers and stuff like that, who, who worked on albums that I would have never known who they were. I would have never looked for them, but somehow our paths crossed through somebody else. And then you sit down with that person. It's like, oh, my God, a wealth of insight and information that comes from it. You know, it's not it's not getting Gene on the show. It's not getting Paul on the show. It's not getting Peter or Ace on the show. I mean, as much as that would be great, those are not holy grails to me. Right. Because they 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 they've talked to everybody for decades. I am I want to have somebody on who has has not talked to anybody and didn't think there would be anybody interested in talking to them. Yeah, those and then slot signs end up being the most interesting. It, it, exa- <laughs> exactly. So it's hard to say who that would be. We kind of know that when we were like, you know, I'll I'll, I'll send a message to the, the other guys here and I'll be like, hey, what about this person? They were an engineer on this album. And we're like, yeah. And then we just start talking and, you know, I mean, it leads to like, it was like a year ago when the whole Bob Kulik kiss alive thing blew up on the internet. I mean, we didn't go out seeking that, 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 that guy out. We didn't go seeking that news out. It was, as we've said many times, that was something that was just mentioned in a passing comment as we were talking to him and our eyes bulged out going, what did you just say? What? Right. Right. That's a good point. Um, For me, it would be, uh, I would love to have Getty Lee on to talk about those early touring days with Kiss from his perspective as a musician. Uh, I would like to have Nikki Six on. Nikki would be fun, yeah. Yeah, because of his love of the band. Um, I would love to have Eddie Kramer on because we haven't had him on yet. Uh, about uh, who else? Those are the three that come to the 
top of mind. I mean, Bob, Bob Ezrin would be, fu- would be fun. I did interview Bob yeah. Ezrin back during the psycho circus era. And we, we've, we've yeah. shared that interview here, but yeah. it would be fun to get Bob on. Um, but again, for me, it's usually somebody I don't even know of that becomes like, holy crap. Because they tell was... you something you've never heard before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But those people are not easy to find. And we've done a lot of digging. And also, too, credit goes to all of our listeners, because so many of you have given us a hint as to how to find somebody. And it, that it, is it's bad. all it, those people come through networking. Yeah. You know, it's like I know somebody who knows somebody. And I'm talking to them and they're like, oh, you know, you should talk to this this person I work with. 40 years ago, they worked on a Kiss album. And I'm like, who, what? Right. Tell me more. Right. Exactly. So um, I don't know who Mark would say, but um, yeah. So there you go. Brett Roscoe wants to know, between now and 2035, Kiss have at least one 50th anniversary every year. The 50th of the debut was disappoint was a disappointment. Do you think we'll get anything really special for any other release? Um, based on what we know right now, I would say, no, you're not going to get anything special until things work out in the kiss world. And by that, I mean, we've all heard that, you know, there's rumors that that kiss is selling and let's be clear. They're not selling their catalog. They're not selling their music. Kiss do not own the catalog. They do not own their music. They own some of the more recent albums, right. but you know, everything through the seventies, they don't own any of that stuff through the eighties. They don't own any of that stuff. Universal owns those albums, those recordings. Kiss does. not um, So what kiss is rumored to be doing is they're going to sell their trademarks, the kiss logo, the kiss business, the kiss license, all the kiss products, everything but the music and you know, the rumors are, and again, I have no insight into this universal doesn't want to do anything until that's figured out as to who are going to be the new owners of the kiss trademark and how cooperative would they be and all this other stuff. It's business. Um, I don't think until all of that settles out, will we see anything really cool happening between now and whenever that happens what we will get is universal repackaging what they already have as we saw with the creatures of the night box set they could do that completely without kiss's involvement Mm -hmm. so they're just going to keep repackaging and re trying to resell what they already have in their vaults between now and whenever um yeah disappoint disappointing yeah but it's business yeah it's true uh steve woods asks was there a darker black version of jeans destroyer armor costume like the one in your photo there was obviously a silver version, but I've wondered if it was just the photography or different color. That said, a shiny black version would also look amazing. And Louis Lapointe, who is one of our top contributors, hopped in and said, check his replicas. They explained the reason why his armor was black early on and then gray. It was because the black was wearing off and it was too much to work to repaint it regularly. Now, that's yeah, something I'll- I didn't... Go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, go to go to kissreplicas.com. Um, I think they might actually sell or offer the two different versions of like the destroyer armor, the dark one and the shiny silver one. And I'm pretty sure um, they've got some videos up on kissreplicas.com or on their socials where they go through and explain what's different and why it happened um to this day i'm still amazed at kind of how many subtle variations exist of their costumes throughout the 70s because they were making it up as they went oh yeah things were getting repaired things started out looking great and then they realized it was impractical for being on the road it wore out much quicker um 
you know, they were just flying by the seat of their pants back then. Right. And I think so much of it was literally one step away from falling apart. Oh, yes. Yeah, you don't even know that as a fan because you're looking at it from the outside inward. Um, John Brooks says, with Kiss retired from live tours, I'm guessing the focus will be on lost and found archive items until the avatars are ready. Do you think we'll ever see the original short story that Gene supposedly wrote for the elder? I asked him this at the official New York kiss convention at Roseland ballroom. And he said, he kind of sidestepped it and answered by saying, well, half the fans would like it and half the fans would hate it, but never got a yes or no. My guess is that, you know, Gene's a politician. He reads the room and says what he thinks he needs to say. It doesn't mean he's disingenuous, but there's no reason for any of that stuff to come about if you don't if you don't have financing for somebody that wants to somehow do something with it. You yeah, know? I mean, generally, Kiss is not going to take it upon themselves to create some new product, manufacture the new product, release the product on their own. Yeah, they don't just if, don't do if, that. If, Going back to Universal, if Universal came to Kiss at some point and said, we're going to do an Elder box set, we'd like to do an Elder box set based on what we've already got in our vault. Gene, Paul, do you have stuff in storage that we could add to this? Oh, yes, right. I've, I've got the original short story I wrote. We've got photos in the studio. We've, who knows? You know, it could be anything. Yes, at that point, if somebody says, okay, we will buy it from you so we can use it and make a product, then it happens. Otherwise, I would assume otherwise the best chance of that stuff ever seen the light of day is going to be at Gene's Kiss Museum in Vegas. Right. Yeah, exactly. More than likely, those are both great answers. I hadn't even contemplated either one of those, but that's where it'll end up. Uh, it's It's... It's too long and too far gone at this time to do anything like that. I wonder whatever happened to that guy that was trying to do the elder thing. Remember, he used to just bug the living shit out of us. Well, I, 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 I think I think the fans like there was a guy who was going to do an elder movie. There was a guy who was going to do an elder 3D graphic of it. Yeah. And I think what everybody finds out and, you know, Gene and Paul have said this so many times. Nobody liked the elder. It was not a successful album. No. I mean, you know, yes, amongst the super uber diehard fans, sure. But amongst the general music public out there, um, there's general music fans who, will, who lo- would be okay with Destroyer stuff. There's a lot of them that go, what the fuck's the elder? Mm-hmm. The concept album Kiss did? No, no interest in that. Mm-hmm. I mean... You know, it didn't even it didn't even go gold when it was released. They they couldn't even tour on it. So why would why would we think that there's a big market for it? And there just isn't. And that's the problem. And and also, too, you have to keep in mind that when you look at KISS fans as a collective. Yeah, all of the people in that group are a KISS fan, but they're KISS fans in varying degrees. So to Michael's point someone that loves destroyer and would spend money on a box set or whatever, make, make care less about the elder or a, a number of other records. And I think that's literally what the uh, labels look at as they try to figure out, engage, what could we make that would sell well? Cause again, yeah. at the end of the day it's profit. So the last thing they're going to do is look at one of the poorest selling records that the band ever had and go, okay, this is going to be the target of our next you know, deluxe, whatever, which is unfortunate, but that's just how it works. And it's not just Kiss, it's other bands as well. Yeah. I mean, you know, amongst all Kiss fans, it's pretty safe to say the vast majority of all Kiss fans have have some form of like or love for Destroyer or Love Gun or those kinds of albums. But even within the vast number of Kiss fans, there's a lot of them that don't have any love for the elder that would not even give it the time of day. So again, yeah, somebody's make got to remember this is a business to other people like the label. It's a business. They're not doing it just because 
first of all, the people at the label are not Kiss fans. No, it's just it's just it's just a business. It's a product, and yeah. all they're looking at is how much money are we investing, and what do we think we can sell on this? Do we think we can sell more Destroyer box sets or Elder box sets? And someone's going to do the numbers and go Destroyer, right? It's just a lot of it's just common sense. So unfortunately, we lose in that area. But again, we've also gotten a lot of great stuff too, and it's just it is what it is. Yep. Um, Jason McCarty, who is a total pot stirrer, uh, his comment is the real reason Mitch left the show. I think that's really. I know he's just like busting our balls, but for those of you that don't know, he quit. Yeah, I mean, episode sixty six. We- we we have we have always given the real reason Mitch left the show yeah. from the day it happened to any time it's asked. We were having a chat talking about upcoming future guests. Um, Mitch was handling booking guests for us, and I think he had booked double booked Dave Ellison from Megadeth and. Uh, Richie Weiss. Richie Weiss. The same day. And he's like, what do we do? And I'm like, just I don't care which one. Just message one of them and say, hey, apologize. We got double booked. Can we move you to the next week? And now I'm sure that was the straw that broke his back. But then he basically is like, that's it. I'm, I'm, I can't deal with this anymore. I quit. And yeah. and that wasn't the first time he's he had done that. Oh, because yeah. Tommy, you had you had smoothed things over and quote saved the show at least a couple times prior to that when he was like quitting or threatening to yep. quit and at and, least two or three and, times. It just got exhausting. Yeah. It was it just like got exhausting. A, yeah, it's like living with an alcoholic that keeps saying they're going to stop drinking and they don't. You know, and I don't have any ill will against towards Mitch. I, I, I'm indifferent at this point. I hope that he has a good life and he's healthy and he's doing the best for himself. I, there's no animosity, but I don't, it, it was a miserable experience. And for 95% of you that have no idea what we're even talking about, when this show first started out 10 years ago, we had a different co-host uh, named Mitch Lafon, and he lasted 65 episodes. And then that was it. And so then we changed course. We brought in, um, you know, the uh, golden Adonis. And uh, then we found Lisa and we just found the right stride, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, it it, it didn't work. There was tension behind the scenes. He want Mitch wanted to do guests every week. Tommy and I were like, no, we want to have at least half the shows every month where there's no guests. So we can just like this talk kiss. And yeah. he didn't want, he wanted guest, 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 guest. And even and guests trying- like, even guests too, that I'm just like, I don't want to talk to guys that were in the, you know, I don't know, dangerous toys or bang tango or who gives a yeah. fuck. Yeah. So I, I mean, to, to answer the question, that is the real reason. We've always told you the real reason. If anybody yeah. else is telling you some other real reason, they're just lying. Because that's not true. And um, speaking of the the golden Adonis, there he is. There he is. Yeah. So Mar- do- Mark Le- Le- Lisa's in her court right now, um, and we're doing a hit and run. So continue, Tommy. Okay. Uh, this one I'm going to uh, have Mark actually answer because he knows more about it than we do. <laughs> Skip this one for now. I'm in the middle of my goddamn jerky beef. Well, you can jerk your beef later. This is actually one that I think you can answer. Uh, no, I'm jer- not fucking. I'm but, my... Ask another question and come back to it. Put yeah. the wiener down for a minute. I know it's <laughs> against your moral compass, but all right. So we'll go. We'll come back to Bob, Stacy Deville. Uh, I always wondered if the New York Dolls slash Kiss rivalry was personal or just something fans made up. In Sylvain Sylvain's book, he thinks Kiss's 
Pale Faces were a direct ripoff of Sylvain, uh, Sylvain's makeup. These are two of my favorite bands. It's always amazed me the difference between the blue collar kiss culture and the artsy dolls culture seem to clash. Since I've come since I've come out of the closet, my Franklin has educated me on how gay both bands are in a good way, I mean. Discuss. Okay, I don't know who Franklin is. Um, and I guess I, uh, Sylvain, Sylvain sounds bitter. You know, I mean, I, I let's mean, face it, Kiss exploded and New York Tells didn't, for good or for I bad. I mean, you know, and, and honestly, I don't know if that rivalry was real or not. I mean, we weren't in either of the bands. We didn't know anybody. So uh, we could only go based on what people write and say. You know, I do, I do remember decades ago, probably Gene saying, you know, when they first started and you can see the photos of Kiss in the stairwell where they kind of had a New York Dolls glam look going. And Gene said it didn't work for us. We look like a bunch of six foot tall football players wearing glam and it didn't work on us. So we couldn't do the New York Dolls style of glam. We had to go to the extreme of what they did, black leather and makeup. Because they were just, they were big guys. Well, and if you see, if you see some of that early footage in the seventies from the Coventry in different places, not when Kiss was playing, but just the crowd and what the crowd was made up with, a lot of them had face paint on, just like Kiss used. That was more extreme than what the dolls had on. And that leads me to believe that this was a whole movement in the same manner in which punk was a movement in the 70s in London. So there was a lot of people already that were just fans going to these shows painting their faces. So I'm sure Kiss definitely took ideas from the dolls, but they probably also saw just literally what was going on around them. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it should be quite obvious. I mean, Kiss took influence from dolls, from Alice Cooper, from yeah. glam glam rock bands over in the UK. I mean, they, they 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 acknowledge that. They yeah. acknowledge that you know they went and saw Alice Cooper and said, "We need to basically be doing four Alice Coopers on stage." You know, how do we one up that? Um, I I don't. For me personally, it's not a big deal. I mean. Every band is influenced somewhere along the lines. I don't, it's, it's hard to be completely original as a band. Somebody's already done something like it before. Right. I mean, if you really want to dig, go back and look at what um, Roy Wood used to do. Yep. I mean, you know, there's a, there's some, there's a musician that a lot of people probably don't know. And you look at him and go, holy crap. That's Gene Simmons right there. Right. About the crazy world of Arthur Brown. Brown. There you yeah. go. Jesus Christ. That was, uh, you know, screaming Jay Hawkins before. Oh, you guys used and, to and, come out of a cat. Yeah. And, and, and let, let's be honest. Music has always been right place, right time. We could all sit here and go, well, this band did it as good, if not better than that other band. But they did it one year too early. And no, nobody's ever heard of them, right? I mean, it doesn't mean that it's good or bad. Yeah, look at Little Richard. I mean, wore eye makeup, and I mean, yeah. Come on, yep. And this is there's hardly anything new under the sun, and and by the time you know Kiss put on the full, I mean Mick Jagger was wearing eye makeup, and you know it. Uh, Bob Dylan took yes, a Kiss white face. I put a white face on and some eyeliner during the hard rain period. So I think all artists influence each other in different ways. Sometimes it's nothing more than, you know, uh, something on someone's logo or a, a band photo or maybe a riff off of a song. But they're always constantly sharing with each other. It's just the way Sylvain, because I've read that too before and other um, things that he has been interviewed, he just sounded bitter. Like he was expecting the dolls to make it huge, but... I mean, in, in my personal opinion, I don't think their songs were good enough. I mean, some of them, I, were, I, don't get me wrong. I, I just, yeah. and, and again, timing. America just wasn't ready for that. I still think uh, had Eddie Kramer done, because I'm a big New York Dolls fan. I, the, the demos, 
because there's a demo disc. The, dem the demos are better than Rungren was the wrong producer. On, oh, on totally, that. totally. Um, because I mean, really, if and they were another band like Kiss, or I should say, Kiss was like because they were there before Kiss. Live, they were a lot more aggressive. Meaning the Dolls. I mean, that fucking listen to Jet Boy live, motherfucker, man. That's a proto metal. It was just great stuff, man. I love that song. Um, although the, the Dolls, it's funny too because the Dolls are pretty cartoony too. You know what I mean? It. Uh, I you know I, I've always had kind of a problem with the whole artsy rock stuff because. There's so many free passes given to people like the, the like them, and then like Patty Smith in a few years later, and you know, it just oh, they just again, they those people apologize for themselves. I, 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 I that's this isn't the time or place for that discussion, but no, yeah, but I it, was thinking the other day that that um, the spokesperson for Lumi should be Patty Smith. <laughs> good one Don. i think she needs it well i i will tell i like some patty smith. i like patty smith music i just uh, again this is not the, the time or play. i could really shred into some of that stuff and, please don't uh, I, I, i'm not i'm not yeah because th remember mark this is tommy's episode oh yeah that's right sorry about that hey, so no, tommy gets to do whatever he wants on this episode and so you're done with your meat log so here's the question <laughs> 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 Bob Jordan walk. wants wants to know: Will there be another Kiss cruise of some kind? Non makeup sail away, Bruce Kulick band, Gene Solo band, Paul Soul Station, uh, other supporting acts. It was my heaven, and would love it, it was my heaven, and would love even an altered one. Well, didn't we oh, talk I, about this that, last week? No, but I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember what was said, and I know that Mark is really tuned into this shit. And All I right. thought maybe what was, would... was this Jim? Is that what you said the guy's name is? Um, What's his name? Bob Jordan. Bob. Okay, Bob, you're reading all the same crap I'm reading. Um, none of it is none of it is verified. Um, so yeah, I mean, everything you just said has been the standard line in the rumor mill. All I can say is this: We'll see. I have heard from some pretty credible sources that. It is on the table. That doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it's something they're looking at. So, so uh, I can say, ca be cautiously optimistic is all I can say. Fair enough. The, I think we are in a period of kiss right now for the next six, 12 months, at least two years, two years where truly anything's possible applies. Yeah. Anything is possible right now. The only thing that's going to make something not possible, somebody's dead, or some big deal changes the course of history right now. But right now, we're kind of in this gray area where, sure, I mean, if you, li if you listen to that, that Q&A that Gene did on Facebook, you, get, you, you walk away from that going, he's not committing. He's not saying yes. He's not saying no. He's just saying, sure, it's possible. That yeah, doesn't mean does. that doesn't mean yes. That's that's the thing. And, and I think we can easily see this when Gene says, sure, anything's possible. The fans walk away going, he said, yes, there's going to be a cruise. No, he well, didn't say there was going to be. A well, cruise. It's it's funny being a Kiss fan right now is, again, because I am a Rush fan. It's like being a Rush fan since Neil's passing. There's stuff in the hopper. There's stuff happening, like, uh, you know, uh, Getty did the book tour and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, Alex joined him. I, there's there's these satellite things happening. And I, I think that's going to be the new normal for Kiss. Um, unfortunately for Kiss, you know, we also get when Ace does stuff and when Bruce does stuff and the other guy doesn't matter. The guy with the, uh, you know, the one guy with the weird, whatever his name is. Eric so, Singer? Uh, we're, we're not. <laughs> no, not that guy. That guy's a good guy. Uh, <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. 
So <laughs> no, the guy that lives um, in the trailer court. The guy who charges for his the guy who charges for his Facebook. Although someone told me he's oh, not doing oh, that now. oh yes. Paul Runner is his pseudonym. Was that what his name is? I thought it <laughs> yeah, was that's his, one of his fake accounts. One of his fake accounts. No, Another I will one tell you, you know, we've said it before. What a what a dumbass. That guy, you know, and and I, I just have since we're on the subject. People love comebacks. People love to be yep. forgiving. If that guy would have came back in 2018 and tried, even tried to make things right, his his whole world would be different. His Everything about his current state would be different. You, you yep. wouldn't have all this. But he didn't. And it's all on He's, him. I mean, we, we observed it first hand. Oh so yeah, uh, yeah. A, I mean, you're you're 100 like... right, Mark. I mean, he if if you left that Atlanta Expo where he came back the morning after that, you would have thought, "Holy crap! What a comeback story! What an amazing event!" Every, he's got he's got the world in his hands, and within two months, it was all shot to hell pissed all over every bit of it matter of fact almost like pissed on it twice just to make sure yep. <laughs> yeah yeah let me piss on like it that. then let me back up over it and walk on it again and turn around and piss a second time on it. yeah yeah but that's almost yeah. like saying god if he wasn't a hyena and he was just a regular dog things would be much better he can't change who he is a leopard doesn't change their spot well no you know? no you're, you're you're right but i kind of look at it this way Everybody's got. Everybody should be given a chance for a a, a yes. second chance to try. I mean, Ace Ace and Peter got that I'm second not chance that he with the reunion. A second chance, and you know, and it's the same thing in ninety six, ninety seven. Ace and Peter had the world in their hands, and what did they both do? They eventually pissed it away and pissed on it a second time, as Mark yeah. basically said. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it's history. It's History repeats itself, sadly, but I think people are should be given the opportunity to come back. You know, that was that was Vinny's second chance, April, uh, January of 2018 at that expo. After that, third time, fourth time, he blew it. So anyway, questions. Let's go on. Let's stop talking about that thing. All right. Um, Carl Ostenburg. Brooke, B-R-U-C-H. So, Carl, I'm sorry I slaughtered your name. Do you think a live three should have been recorded on the Hits tour instead of Revenge? I think it would have rivaled the first two if it was. I, I don't know. I, I would suspect the energy was probably much better on the Hits tour than the Revenge tour. But... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, again, this all comes down. We've said this before when, before you got on, Mark, it's, it's business. I mean, it's not like kiss decides we're going to do an album. There's a record label that's involved and maybe the label said, no, no, we don't, we don't think there's an album worthy. It's worthy of doing in an album and investing in the recording because the label's paying for all of it. Right. Not, not the band. Um, you know, there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes that that determines whether something happens or not. I can just say as a fan, and we've said this so many times, God, the, the energy level at that Hot in the Shade tour was just explosive. Would that have That's given cool. us a different feeling, a Live 3 album? I would think so. You know, plus I, I, would have loved, I would have loved to have have... have had them do the original template, meaning, yes. you know, three songs live out al or three ba three albums live album, three albums live album. But here's here's the rub though. By the time they got, because the third album technically would have been uh, Preachers, wouldn't it? No, no, would have been The Elder. Yeah, because um, it would have been Dynasty Unmasked The Elder if they would have done three. Yep. Um, since they didn't, you know, tour during the Elder, say the next one they would have done was Creatures. Well, they were playing, you know, in the proofs and, the, you know, when we got the uh, all those live shows that came out. 
I, I would have loved to have seen them bookend the makeup years with with a live three. And plus knowing now, uh, it's funny, we were just talking about the jackass, but motherfucker, that was a powerful band, man. And uh, the the live shows prove that that the, the creatures tour and, and look, let's be fair, you know, right into the Lick It Up tour. All you have to do is listen to that Nashville show from. 84 i mean they were on fire i mean just fucking playing their asses off i think that would have been a great uh time for kiss alive three um maybe during the lick it up tour you know or before that again i personally if it was up to me I, they would have bookended it they would have done creatures and yeah it didn't do well but you know let's let's be fair when uh when when uh when Kiss Alive came out, they were hardly setting the world on fire, you know, album sales wise, meaning, you know, Dress to Kill wasn't flying off yeah, the shelves. Uh, uh, yeah. Kiss Alive 3 but, recorded on the Creatures Tour would have been freaking amazing. That would have been so explosive. But I, I, I just have to go back to, I'm sure, you know, if Kiss went back to, to, to Mercury Records at that point in time and said, OK, we just we just had a bomb album. And before that, another bomb album. And before that, a subpar album. But now let's do a live album. The label probably is like, we're not giving you fucking anyone to do that. Well, and well, that's the other it. thing I think people need to keep into consideration is, is that, you know, I don't know, and I can't speak to this because I wasn't there, but it always felt to me like Kiss is like the redheaded stepchild that you got to kind of keep around and that most of the people in the label really never other than maybe Neil Bogart, never really believed in them. You know, because I used to go to the to the um, Mercury offices a lot in the 80s, and they were kind of considered a joke. You know, the people that worked at the label were into other stuff, and it sure wasn't Kiss. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think and this is just pure guess on my part, they saw Kiss as value as a catalog band, even in the 80s. Yeah. It's all that 70s material that Univer Mercury, Polygram, and eventually Universal all had. I mean, that that that's valuable material. Plus, you do have two guys, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley, who, even in the 80s, were pretty big in the freaking music industry. Pretty big. Even though, even though they weren't necessarily selling albums like Motley Crue or Twisted Sister or Bon Jovi or any of those bands. Um, but you're right. You, they were kind of like, well, we, we got to keep them here because we don't want them to go somewhere else. Right. But we don't really want to invest a lot of money in them either. Cause they're not selling a ton of albums. You know, what's funny about that though, Mike, because, uh, you know, as you guys know, my, my, uh, my Holy Trinity of American hard rock, all three kiss, um, with smashes thrashes. OK, that went double platinum. Right. Or, yep. at least, and at the time, they weren't they weren't selling double platinum studio records. You know nope. what I mean? Aerosmith, when when Greatest Hits came out, that went that's a, eventually went diamond. But I mean, even at the time, um, you know, that album came out in 1980, went platinum plus, you know, and their latest record wasn't flying off the at the time. It would have been uh, Rock and a Heart, not Rock and a Heart, but Night in the Ruts. That was hardly flying off the shelves. Um, Ted Nugent in 1981, Great Gonzo's went double platinum. Scream Dream at the time was gold. It's just funny when you look at that, those, that back catalog, even back then in the early 80s and, and Kisses in the late 80s. What sold those records? That's what kept those bands alive. <laughs> and, and you know, fast forward to now, the the labels now even more so know mu new music has hardly no value. It's the back catalog from all of these bands that they represent. That's where labels make their money. How many times, and <laughs> let's go back to the Creatures of the Night box set version two, how many times can we repackage the same back catalog so the fans will buy it again and again and again? Because people will buy, they'll buy the greatest hits more than they'll buy a new studio album. 
Well, what were the what was the kiss gold? And didn't that go that one? Yeah. Ended up, and that was what well. I, I, I've got I've got a couple I've got a couple of those behind me here. It's like uh, uh, kiss. What is this one? The very best. The very of best. Kiss. That was the one. That was the one I was. And thinking of you own. wanted the best. You got the best. I mean, those both went gold. Those went. Those were back years ago, decades ago. They were gold albums. They might be platinum by now if they get recertified. And I mean, that's in the United States, just so you guys know. That's just the have, U.S. Yep. And that's five hundred thousand, half a million. Yep. Um. Yep. Sales for gold. Just and, think and, about that. And and that's why and like labels that sound scan too. That sound yeah. scan. And that's yeah. why labels love them because guess how much money did did Universal have to spend on the very best of Kiss? Pretty much this, other than creating some artwork yeah. and producing the product. Hey, hey Mike, the music the younger, music was all sitting in their vault in their library. They just went Mike, in and said, hey, that one, fans, that one's and, and for fans that don't know, could you go in a little bit more detail on sound scan? Sound, sound. I so mean, I know, but prior, you're yeah, prior prior to sound scan, especially during the seventies, record sales were just trusted word of mouth. So basically, Billboard would call up a record store and go, "How many albums did you sell this week?" And they'd go, "Oh, we sold ten thousand of them." Well, that might not have been true because the record label was paying the the record store something under the table to boost the numbers. Um, and, and at some point sound scan started and sound scan was literally when you went to a record store and they scanned that barcode, that was a sale. That was a sale. That was a sale. That was a sale. So sound scan had a lot less ability for people to fudge and fake it. And I'm not saying they still couldn't because record labels were, were geniuses at getting around all of that and inflating their numbers. But sound scan really meant there's a pretty good chance that 500,000 meant 500,000 albums were sold. And and keep in mind something like the Kiss box set, which went gold, that only sold 100,000 because a box set had five CDs in it. So one sale basically was five albums. So that's how it works. A double album only has to sell half as many as a single album. Well, and I think the other thing that we also have to kind of take into account or mention is, is that when you're looking at different acts throughout the years, when it comes to Kiss, they didn't have the credibility that, say, Bruce Springsteen or the Eagles had. Not that it's good, bad, or indifferent, but there's, uh, there's this certain amount of respect that comes along with being one of those bands that even if the people that work at the labels don't particularly care for the music, they sure seem to give them the respect they deserve based on their legacy. And even though Kisses deserves the exact same thing as do many other artists, they never really got that. So to the point that of the makeup. You know, Michael and Mark are making, they live on the catalog, the, the back catalog. It's like, the, the running joke about the Grateful Dead is, yeah, they sold a million tickets on tour, but it was this, it was the same 20,000 people who bought all million of the tickets because it's literally like a, a traveling show to go see them. And I really believe that that had an impact on things as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Next question. Uh, next question. Um, Will they still do music even though they are not touring anymore? Christopher Cunningham would like to know that. I don't know. I'm not in the band. I don't see it. I mean, Paul's been very vocal about um, that subject. Like, why? Um, which bothers me just as a Kiss fan because, again, we're still getting new music from, you know, Deep Purple still putting out new music. Judas Priest just put out a just incredible album. Oh, you know, the Alice, Rolling Stones record, Jesus yeah. is that good. Oh. oh, I know, but but that's exactly my point. You know, I'm like, but no, I the the and the reason I say that I you know no one from the band person. Well, it's not true because Paul. I asked Paul that on the Kiss Cruise personally, 
um, if they were going to do a, you know, a single or something, you know, uh, when this all ended and he's like, no, matter of fact, cause I, I brought it up to him because, uh, I know he's a fan of the band. I'm a big fan of Mott the Hoople, big Ian Hunter fan. And when Mott the Hoople folded, um, they did a song called Saturday Gigs, which was basically them retelling the story of the band in song. And that was a goodbye to the fans, which I always thought was pretty cool. By the way, if you get a chance, um, that's a really cool song. If you ever um, want to check out how that's done right, because when they folded up Mop the Hoople, a song called Saturday Gigs, and um, um, Mick Ronson plays guitar on it from David Bowie's band. Really, really good song. And and I asked Paul about it, because I know that he's a, he was a Mop the Hoople fan, too. And he's like, he said no. He's like, you know, just not interested in making new Kiss music. Um, with that done. said, hold on, with that said, though, um, Mike and Tommy, I, I don't know if either one of you posted it, but Ace said recently he's going to go back to some of his old demos and maybe resurrect some of those songs because. Yeah, he said in that the, in an interview with someone. Yeah, really? in, in the Kiss world, I look, there's a, for some crazy reason, Ace has some really kick ass unreleased songs. I mean, Kiss does too. I would love to see them go back and do like mistake i love that song you know that's a um it's my life well no because that's been released um but yeah they can redo that anytime they want but you know there's there's you know it ain't the smoke i'd love to see them go back and you know and, and let's face it that's basically what van halen did on a different kind of truth they went and went back to all these old finished, the old, finished a bunch of old demos I yeah. think part of the problem, though, with people in general is that we're looking at it from an outsider's perspective because we don't know what it's like to be one of them. And you think, well, why wouldn't you do this? But think of it this way. If you've been at a job for 20, 30 years, why do you want to retire if you love the job so much, even though it gave you great financial security and you had, you know, two or four weeks pay for vacation. You had all the wonderful benefits in a, in a 401k or, or whatever it might be. There comes a time where you just can't or don't want to do it anymore. And I think that's kind of where they're at. And I think they all kind of want to do other things. I can't speak for any of them, but it seems to me that Gene will be the most likely to carry the torch. At least he'll be out touring, we hope. Uh, doing live shows where we can hear some of those really great, not often played songs. But it seems to me like Paul's just done. I mean, I got that feeling. I, I, I think Paul's burnt out right yeah, now. Yeah, that's what and, I mean. And, 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 we, and I think we all know that given enough time, you get, you get yourself recharged. Right. But yeah, I'm, so still, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna still put on the business hat in this discussion. If yeah. If somebody approaches Gene or Paul individually or as Kiss and says, here's a half a million dollars, we want a new album, good chance it would happen. Yeah. Good chance. If nobody is going to come to Kiss and say, here's a record deal, here's money to go record this, it's not going to happen. They're, they're, they, there's no need for them to invest their own money and risk and the risk involved at this point in their end of their career to go record an album, which let's be honest, whether it's a solo album by either of them or a kiss album, it's, it's not going to even a, remotely approach gold in sales. They'll be okay. lucky to do a couple hundred thousand as a kiss album. And as a solo artist, what? 75,000, maybe a hundred thousand. Yeah. At Somebody best, else has to put the money up to record the album. And then there's a good chance it'll happen. And there's also uh, one of the reasons that, that people are wealthy is they invest and they, they buy assets. And they usually do it using other people's money. So it doesn't matter whether you're in real estate or you're in construction or you own an IT company or you're in a rock band. 
you have to be approached for that opportunity to come to fruition. So to Michael's point, yeah, it'll happen if someone's going to hand them a chunk of money. There's a good possibility they might do it, but it's kind of a means to an end at this point because it looks like they're going in different directions and trying to do things that are outside my, my, of, you know. My, my gut tells me that before we would ever see any sort of a Kiss album, we'll see a Gene solo album and we'd see a Paul solo album. Yes. Now, yeah. that Paul solo album could be soul, another Soul Station, or it could be, I mean, I remember when I, he was doing his book tour, and he, in an interview, said he really wants to go back in and record an album like his 78 solo album, which a I rock love. album. I would mm-hmm. love that. Maybe Paul just needs time away, recharge from being burnt out, Get the bug in you again, the creative juices, and somebody says, "Yeah, you know what? We'll give you a, we'll give you seventy five thousand dollars for a, a new Paul Stanley solo album." Hey, I'll uh, tell you what. You know what I'd like to see? I'm not kidding in the least bit. I'd love to see Evan and Paul do an album together. That would be fun too. Sure, I think that would be fucking awesome because Evan's super talented. Yeah, and there's, yes. I, I like, you know, I don't know how much he, he I mean, I, because I really like that song Silver that uh, um, uh, Amber Wilde did. I mean, I, yeah, oh, my point yeah. is this I, I, I could really constant I, constellation. I, I think Paul would really enjoy that, and he might, I mean, especially just for a one off, I think it would be really cool because I like some of those sort of, uh, I don't know, what would you call them? They're not novelties. Well, I'll give you a great example. Um, one of my, I, I just went and saw Peter Frampton last weekend. And by the way, you get a chance to see Peter Frampton. Oh my God, incredible. Um, but one of his uh, later records, he did an, you know, an all instrumental, um, uh, uh, you know, album and it and it's just it's just cool that he's still putting music out and well if you're he's out and he's out touring but wasn't he sidelined with an illness or something he he sits now the whole show he sits in a chair oh does he have like ms or something or he come he's got some sort of look at it you can google it you know again guys the shows uh, when we tape this it's live we don't sit and go back and check shit but um you know he walks out with a cane sits and oh, okay. uh but when he starts playing boy oh boy and his boy i tell you he's one of those guys like glenn hughes he's still singing like it's the 70s i mean he sounded and he, you know that's another thing peter frampton just played for two and a half hours two and a half hours i mean and everything voice box you know the thing you know do you feel like with you and but he also just I mean, he went deep into his catalog. Again, I love Peter Frampton. It was great. He played stuff off his first record. He did uh, um, he did some Humble Pie. He, I think he did three Humble Pie songs. Just, you know, it was tune after. And that's another thing. It was song after song after song. And uh, I love what he did. It was funny because some bands don't care about being in the, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's currently on the ballot. And he took a break during the show. And did this thing where you, for the fan vote, if you hold up your camera or whatever, you get to, you see that little thing and it scores a vote. And, sure. Um, but it was cool. Um, but yeah, but I mean, uh, oh, I know what it was. Some people call those vanity records where they just do stuff. You can yeah. tell it's just for them. And, and I, I think that's what, uh, you know, Peter did with uh, some of those instrumental records. But I really love it. You know, and and I I would love to see Paul do something with his son. I I think I think in definitely for Paul more so than Gene. It's if he records music, it's not going to be for us. It's not going to sure he's going to want us to buy it, but he's not recording it because the fans are asking for it. He's going to do an album that he just wants to do purely for himself, and he could care less if anybody else likes it. I mean, he's at that point in his career where he doesn't need to answer to record labels. He doesn't need to try and succeed. He succeeded. He went out on the top. I mean, Kiss has planted their flag, and they are going to be recognized 
for eternity. Now he's just going to spend his time doing exactly what he wants and makes him happy. As he should. Tommy, did, did we lose you, Tommy? Apparently. No, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, your, your, cam- your camera's off. I know. I don't know why. I've been having problems with the internet. I'm probably going to have to restart this again. I don't know. But I am here listening to you go on. Okay. Well, re- read another question because, and we should end in the next five, 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, this is an interesting question. And it's another one that is almost impossible to answer. Uh, Doyle Rausch wants to know what is considered the best kiss show ever? And I don't even know how to answer something like that. Each person is going to answer it differently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Mark will probably agree just because we've said this many times. Creatures of the night was the best kiss show I've ever attended. Hot in the shade is a close, very close second was the hot in the shade to it. Tell you what, really quick, you three guys, your three, and it, it doesn't have to be one you attended. What would be your top three kiss concerts if you if you had a choice to go to them or to see really them again to, if you had a chance to see them again oh I, that i can do well i would start with if i could have gone to it i think seeing kiss in australia in 1980 would have been mind-blowing tell you what tell you what here, here's what we'll do three and real quick real quick this doesn't say not deep Three that you could re re go to that you actually went to, and three cherry pick three that you you know of that you would have wanted to go to but didn't go to like that one. So so, so that's like I'll I'll start one. with the three that I've gone to. I would love to go back to a Creatures of the Night show. I would love to go back to a Hot in the Shade show, and I'd love to go back and see them again playing. Um, at the Palms in Vegas when they played Rain. And you were at all three. I was at all three of those shows. Yeah, but just say, so So the two were in Minneapolis and the one was in Vegas. That, correct? Yep. yep. Tommy? What are the three? Okay, so we'll start with the three we've been at. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that would be the um, 1996 reunion first show at Saint at the St. Paul Excel Center. No, it was the Civic Center before they tore it down. That would be number one. Uh, not in any any particular order. And then um, probably the Dynasty show at the Met Center in 79. And then the acoustic show in um, South Dakota that they did at the pawn shop. Those are okay. the three. If I could go back and, and redo three, it would be Creatures of the Night at Cobo Hall. February 23rd, 1983. I'm going to go Dynasty, um, July 13th, 1979 at the Silverdome. I'm going to go December 1st, 2023. That show Friday was better than the last show, I, I thought. Um, the uh, I had I loved that show the, the 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 first night at Madison Square Garden that we went to yeah that show that show was fucking awesome so that'd be at the Creatures Dynasty and the second from last show on the end of the road tour okay, okay. so now it's three shows that you didn't attend that, that you would didn't attend that we'd want to mm-hmm. I would and, and Tommy you just reminded me of this I would want to go to uh, the Dynasty show in Bloomington. That I stupidly didn't realize was happening the day after I went and saw them at the in store. Yep. Um, then I'd want to go to not any particular one, but some show in Australia, 1980, when it was Kisteria over there. And probably a Budokan show in the 70s. When they were literally at their peak, that was that was it. When they were touring Japan, you know, after that, we kind of can see it started to go downhill from there. 
Tommy? The Coven Tree is 74. I would love to see one of those really, really early shows. I would agree with you in Australia, 1980. Don't doesn't matter which one, but one of those shows. And then I the other one I was gonna say is the um one of the shows at the Budokan. I, I would love to have been over in Japan at that time because those are all some of the height two of them are, are at the height of popularity in a couple of different areas. And the, yeah. that would be the ones I'd choose. Mark? Um, that was my first choice, but my first choice is Budokan 78. Yeah. Um, and that's fine too. Yeah. Budokan seven, um, 78 would be one. Um, probably, I'm going to go with you guys too on the Sydney, Sydney in 80, just to, to witness Kisteria. And I would have loved to have seen them at a place like the warehouse in 75 um, down in New Orleans, that little just dumpy yep. little, you know, yeah. if you've ever seen the pictures from the warehouse, it's literally just a wooden. Fucking, yep. It, it didn't. That stage looks so small. Either either there or I would have liked to see them in uh, London in 76, which was still the alive tour at that. What's the, what was it? the uh, Olympic, the Royal Olympic, yeah, whatever you know, like when they did like uh, the, the or the one in Paris, or you know what I mean, when they were just yeah. flirting with some of the songs from from Destroyer on, uh, but still in the alive costumes. I, I, and you know, that's what that'll that'll be my pick. I the 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 Stoned in Paris show would have okay. been great. Cool. Those, those are my three. Um, so okay, one so last one, and we'll get one last question. one last question. And this is one that we can't answer, but Mar actually Mark might know the answer to this. Uh, Ran and Na, why did Paul stop wearing the fireman helmet? You know, a lot of people don't realize that he was wearing it in Japan in 95. You know, um, I, I don't really know. I, I think maybe it was just he just wanted to keep his hair looking good, you know? Yeah, I, that was that would have been my, I would have guessed two things. Didn't want it to mess his hair. And, you know, if it's common knowledge that he'd wear that fire helmet and then throw it out into the audience, well, that's that's an expensive throwaway. Well, and then they stopped playing Firehouse, so that probably did it, too. Yeah. I just had to do that. No, oh, it's real. <laughs> Mark, so for those of you listening, Mark just put on a real Paul Stanley. Yeah, oh, the real deal. Helmet. I mean, those, those, those helmets were never cheap plastic replicas no those were real fireman Fireman's. helmets yeah so i mean you could only imagine you know if he had had to buy one of those for every show on a tour that that's an expense that adds up mm -hmm. i love that bit too those are just fucking cool i'm so happy i have that all right okay oh let let yeah. let tommy before we wrap the very first question, how did we all meet? Mark wasn't here. To oh, yeah, answer. Mark, you have to answer that. We were talking. He They wanted to know how we met. All four of us. How did we first meet? We all met at, uh, at Kiss Expos. That, I, I mean, that, 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 that's what, you know, I said, I don't remember the specific expo. I just remember seeing Mark as a dealer at many expos. Yeah. <clears throat> and and Lisa at the same thing. I remember seeing her around expos, but Mark, you were the one who suggested we reach out and see if Lisa wants to join the show. Yeah, because that was uh, your idea. Yeah, you were you were, si you were sick at looking at nothing but guys. Amen. Which is <laughs> so odd. <laughs> <laughs> Considering I had a beef log earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah i mean at, at I, I, what specific one i couldn't i couldn't tell you but i mean it was one of those things where oh, we would I, see I, each other and... I, I can be i can be somewhat specific with you and lisa but tommy and i crossed paths a bunch of times at 
early on at some of the Kiss Expos because, but Tommy, more interesting, you had a lot of cheap trick stuff that I wanted. Mm -hmm. You were like the cheap trick guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all huge Kiss fans. We met at Kiss Expos, but I remember getting cheap trick stuff from you and your cheap trick stuff was fucking incredible. And that's how I got to know who Tommy was. Mike, I remember the first time we actually talked was probably at one of the Chicago Kiss Expos. You were working for Kiss at the time. Okay. And I remember uh, because our tables were across from one another. And you were, because I had no idea what the fucking internet was or anything. And you're fucking <laughs> like, you still don't. <laughs> <I know. laughs> thank, thank God I can do other stuff. Um, and, and Lisa, I think I knew who she was because she was hot and she was a chick at the Kiss Expos. <laughs> yeah. But then, which, but which then was a rare started, thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but then we just started talking at, at I think, at one of the indie expos. And that's when I told you guys, I'm like, man, I've always kind of like knew because Lisa like was at the expos. And again, when you see her, she, you can't forget her. She's a beautiful girl. But then we started talking and that's how come I said to you two idiots. I'm like, we're going to get her on because not only is she a big kiss fan, you know, she, she's she, not she can hate. She, she can, she can, you can hang. stand. She can yeah. hang with us. She can stand up to us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know we were talking about documents. That was it on kiss documents, because that's when I said we should have her on as a guest. Kind of like what you did with me. Like right. when I came on, I had no, uh, this is a hundred percent guys. When I was asked to do the show, I just thought I was going to be a guest one time and that was it. But it was, I think it was like you guys, meaning you guys out in video land here went, Hey, you know, it kind of worked or, you know, it, 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 yeah, the, 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 the listeners liked it, but you know, and just before you came on, somebody had asked a question about what's the true story about why Mitch left which said it's always we've always told you the truth i was gonna but, say that was a mention that many. right right around the same time you came on here as a guest tommy and i were having auditions where people would send us videos and then if we liked them then we'd have them come on and be a guest on the show and we'd just see how it fit and i remember after you were just on as a guest because you didn't come on as an audition for the show you were just super uber collector that came on as a guest tommy and i afterwards i looked at tommy and i'm like mark needs to be our co-host man did we just the chemistry we just gelled and tommy was like a hundred percent i mean it was just like there you go that's got to be the guy now it was like okay he doesn't have that's a how fucking I felt clue lisa, about the internet how do we make this how, happen yeah, that's how i felt when lisa came on as a guest i'm like okay she needs to be on all the time she's she's cool to hang with she's lots of fun so you know and i and it didn't take much to convince you two like yeah you know let's invite her back so yeah um, yeah so there you go i mean that that that's how we met so that was a fun hit and run yeah. and, 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 and 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 mark mark you did miss actually lisa gave a very cool reveal oh, she was on? The, the, yeah she she was on for about 30 minutes showing the new kiss makeup kit and trust me it's pretty fucking impressive that makeup kit that they, really they just released i'll give her a call or something like because i want to know what that somebody said there's a mirror in it or something yes yeah she showed it yeah yeah because yeah. i it, think you can buy the mirror separately i think i might want to just yeah she she what she showed was a box that bundled just about everything for about 120 bucks included the mirror um and again, the packaging was really impressive. And I told I told those two, I'm like, it's almost like this makeup company talked to a KISS fan to know what KISS fans would like. You're going to want to <laughs> buy one, Mark, just to add to your collection because it's that cool looking. It really is. Okay. It, it, it's it's, yeah. it's very impressive. Very impressive makeup kit. Um, all right. So homework for this week. Do you have the kit, the new makeup? kiss makeup kit and what do you think of it or what do you think of what lisa showed and then answer any of the hit and run questions that we just ran through mm -hmm. yeah 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 and all right and remember everybody this was tommy's episode so if it sucks 
That's because Mark and I last week said, Tommy, all right, we're giving you a show and you can talk about whatever you want. Just be lucky, everybody. He didn't talk about garbage for 45 minutes. I, and I wouldn't do that to people. I wouldn't. I'm just not interested in a $950 release of something I could care less about. I, I had somebody <laughs> online try and justify the $900 box set of like, it's not identical to the other one. It, it comes with a t-shirt and He's a hoodie. That dream. And I, I'm just like, no, no, they just bundle the t-shirt with it. The box set itself is absolutely identical, except it's vinyl. Don't try and fucking justify this. It's not a different box set because you got a t-shirt with it instead. Right. That's, that's that's funny. <laughs> I love it. Some KISS fans will always try and justify but it, but everything. The, but the question then, though, is this gentleman who tried to justify it, is he going to go out and purchase it? Because it's one thing to justify it, but it's another thing to actually lay your money down. Because if he's not laying his money down, then everything he says really All has right, no validity. Real, real quick. And this is this is a homework question. And I mean this sincerely. I, and I live in Kiss Uber world, meaning I know a lot of super big collectors and I'm one of them too. I mean, I don't know a single person who's bought the $1,000 and I, let me tell you, I've talked to a few of my super nerd friends who normally buy that kind of stuff. Everyone I know is protesting. Is like, is it nope. out? No, it's not out yet. It's not shipping yet. Um, do you guys? Is, did you talk to anyone that said I'm going to buy it? Nope i have I've heard from many fans who said I would have bought the vinyl completely separately if they would have just released the vinyl without the whole rest of the box set. I got to admit, I would have done that too because I, I, here's the thing that I just think it's odd. And then we'll get off this top because it's the totally beating a dead horse. <laughs> Until the say, next box set shows up. <laughs> and, oh boy. Oh, well, I know we talked about that off air. <laughs> so, um, uh, I think if you if if you want all the goodies, you already have it. Yep. That's my point. I mean, my 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 destroyer, excuse me, creatures box that's over there. It's with all my yep. other ones. Right there yeah, next to my I destroyer got, box set. I already got the book. Yeah, I already got the booklet and the posters and blah blah blah. I got all that because I already bought it. Why? Oh, why Universal? Did you just not go, you know what? We're gonna put out the rest of the contents on vinyl without all the bells and whistles or tell you what maybe we'll have a bells and whistles whistles one we'll have one with just the vinyl you pick that's another thing you mr consumer you get to pick okay all right that's, all right that's let me ask you this doing. mark if if they released just the vinyl separately with mm -hmm. no posters nothing just the vinyl mm -hmm. how much would you pay and what in your mind what is a fair value for all of those releases. Is, is that 11 records, right? Is that what it is? I thought it was Total? nine. Maybe it was not. I don't know. Again, I'm just going off the top of my head. I know, a couple hundred bucks. Oh, hold on, Michael. Michael, the Wasp one is eight vinyl records, right? Eight, 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 eight vinyl. It's, three, it's 300, right? Just, right just under three, just under 300 suggested retail. I mean, you can get it cheaper than now, but I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, uh, 250 to 275. Yeah, yeah. I would have fair. definitely picked up all the vinyl of the creatures with yeah. nothing else. To me, that would I have still, been fair. I still think I don't know why. <laughs> because the 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 concert of the official box set is an amalgamation. You're right. Fucking just release the shows as an individual. I know one of them, the Pine Bluff, is the, the master is not even, it's not full. It's whatever, only like eight songs, whatever. But, you know, release the... Release the, what you got. Yeah. And and I'll go yeah. back, and it's funny because I saw a couple people, um, you know, talk about, it. <laughs> look, just, you want to do something cool for us? Put the Love Gun one out. Yeah. On three vinyls. 
because there was a lot of bonus stuff. There was live stuff. There was the, 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 you know, the writing, the, the, the in-studio session. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, why the f- universal listen to us? You know what I mean? I don't understand. It's crazy. Yeah. So, all right. All right. There, there, there's a, there's a plethora. That's a big word like gymnasium. Yes. <laughs> plethora of homework for this week but this was a fun good kiss discussion and 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 listen we have no guests confirmed there's about a half a dozen of them that we're trying to get confirmed yeah but they're all being oh maybe now not now i need to wait for an album to come out and then i got to promote the album and so you know maybe next week I don't know. We'll figure it out. We always we always figure it out between now and then. Yeah, well, what you know what? Though, how many? How many? How many? I know I've heard. I know you have too. I saw it in the comments. This is the kind of shit I think most of the people who watch the show like. I though. know. I know. Which is yeah, cool. I, yeah. I I lo- again going back to the whole Mitch thing. This is what Tommy and I always wanted to be able to do. When Mitch wanted to have nothing but guests every week, Tommy and I are like, no, we love just shooting the shit over and connecting with you guys but if you did hate this episode you know complain to michael because no just... this is tommy's episode this is oh, tommy's right. episode everybody yeah but this michael said go tommy's ahead and episode. do it so really i mean <laughs> oh because it sucks, i it's his fault I... Way to take responsibility here. Step up and be responsible for <laughs> your job. There's nothing for me to be responsible for. I'm just stating a fact. And besides, I didn't even have to say that. And they're going to say, God, Brandville's I know. I know. You don't have to say it. They're still going to shit all over me. <laughs> it's your lot in life, man. You are a Bobby Heenan. You are our Bobby Heenan. I'm Bobby Heenan. You know, yeah, I was watching just a quick side. I know Mark won't give a crap about this. I was watching the the dark side of the ring series on Hulu, which is oh. kind of like, like behind the music, but for wrestling. And it it's like, Oh, it's really good. And it's all the dirt of wrestlers and all the crap that goes on. But I'm looking at this going, fuck, no wonder I want to be the heel on this podcast. Well, these heels they- were, these heels were great in wrestling. Absolutely. Well, did they have, they talked about Buck Rock and Roll Zoom Hoff yet? No, not yet. Okay. I don't think he's quite big enough to warrant that sort of attention. Oh. But his crime is more than big enough. Considering he's in jail, yeah. Here, here, here. The my takeaway from that that wrestling series is oh my god, the freaking dirt and the crap and the illegal shit that went on in wrestling blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. All right. That's it, everybody. Besides the coin, we're out of here. See everybody. If you have something to say, leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515-VOICES for three sides of the coin. Provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and...